Hello everyone, I am back on episode 2 now, and in this video we just got a little Hello World program working, and what we're going to be doing today is getting a little build system running so we can get this to build on all the other major platforms, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And the build system I've chosen to use is going to be Premake, and you can find this website here, I'll link it down in the description. But it's a nice little build system. And I prefer this over CMake. And that's just, it's a lot easier to use, but it's not as powerful. But for our purposes, it'll be completely fine. So you can just build it yourself if you really want, or you can do what I did. I just download the binary for the platform you want to use, the one you're running on. In this case, I'm running on Windows, and it just sends you a zip file with a executable file in there. And I just stuck that in my System32 folder just so I could execute it anywhere I like. And I know it's lazy, but that's where I put it. And as long as you can run it, it'll be fine. So to get started, I'm going to open this little prompt here. So when you have it set up, I can type premake and pull up the help commands and it's able to generate project files for Visual Studio, Xcode, and make files. Along with code lights, I don't even know what that is, but you can generate files for it. So to get started, I'm going to update our git ignore file so we can easily work on those other platforms and not have to worry about committing those kind of files over. So I'm going to pull up our git ignore, get it in its own window if I can get it to work with me here. It doesn't want to work with me. All right, we're just hopping Notepad++ here. So right now we only have the get ignore ignoring the Visual Studio files. So what we're gonna do now is hook it up to ignore most of the other files. So we're gonna ignore all make files. That that's all we have to do for make files. Then we have to do the Xcode. So we have. If I can get the names here, C X C workspace, anything ending with that. Then we have the PBX project files, similar story there. Then we have the workspace files, this is for code light. Again, I don't know what it is, but this is the extensions that Premake generates for it, so I'm just going to throw them in here. As for the gignore, that's all we really got to add. So that would just make it easier to commit later. So now we want to actually add our little build script. So I'm just going to run this touch command just so I can generate the file. And premake 5 is written in Lua. So we can just gen generate this little file here. And we can write out our script in here. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to have one global build script. Later this might change, but for the time being this is perfectly fine. So first we're going to define our workspace, which in Visual Studio, this is actually the solution. I'm just going to call it tutorial. Again, you can call it what you like. Then we have to specify our architectures. Let's see, architecture, I spelled it right. In this case, I'm only going to target the 64-bit platforms. So x86, 64. And then we have to specify our configurations, which we're just used to debug and release. So that's easy enough to specify. And then I'm going to actually specify an additional flag down here. And I'm going to specify the multiprocessor compile flag, which just lets it build our project over multiple CPU cores, which I don't see that as a bad thing. Alright, so we're gonna create a couple little variables in Lua here. This would be this would be where we're going to put our output files. And since in Visual Studio we have like we're using tokens for that, we're gonna actually have to repeat it a lot in here, so it would be nice to have little variables for it. So I'll call it the output um let's call it the output binary directory. I'm going to assign it to our little string. And Premake does have some little tokens we can use, but it's specified a little differently with the percent sign and curly brackets. So 
So I'm going to specify the configuration system. Then we're going to hop into the architecture. build configuration and then I'm going to put them inside this directory a little different than how I had it the last time but I think it's just going to look nicer for cross-platform building so our binaries are going to go in the bin folder and they're going to go in this folder which has system architecture and then build configuration for our purposes it will be windows x86 underscore 64 and then debug or release inside that folder we'll have our project names in, in our case we have tutorial, glad to, and jlfw. So I'm just going to copy and paste this for the intermediate directory. I'll just call it the, let's call it the obj directory. So be bin int instead, everything else stays the same. Then we have to actually make our main project here. So we have our tutorial project. And something I should do before I forget is that up here we should set our stop our start project to be our tutorial project here. That would just yeah, make things a little easier. Then for the location flag here, we just tell it where we want it to generate the project files. In our case, we're just gonna stick it inside our tutorial folder, which will match our file system structure we already have. Next we have to specify the kind of application. So there's console app, there's desktop app, shared library, and static library. For now, we're gonna we're gonna use the console app, so that way it can still run, but we still get a little pop-up console window. We have to specify the language it's programmed in. in. This case, we're in C++. Then we have our CPP dialect, which is the version we're using, which is. C++ 17. I'm going to specify our static runtime to be on, which means that our Windows executables, things like that, the runtime libraries that our project needs, they're just going to be built directly into the executable. Next we're going to specify the system version to be latest. Next, we have to specify our target directory, and this is, again, this is where we're going to output directories, and since we have these little tokens here, it will very nicely fill that out. Then we have our obj directory, where our object files go. They will go in there. Then we have to specify the list of files we want. So this is relative to the previous file itself, I believe, so we're going to use the location of our project and we're going to grab every cpp file in that source directory and same with h files and since that's all our project has so far we're going to leave it at that next we have our include directories and we have to specify all of those so i'm going to use the, let's see put it actually in a string. So we're going to use our workspace location to start with. We're going to hop into the vendor folder and we're going to grab our glad to include directory. And we've got a couple more to do this for. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. So we have our glad to include. We have to grab our glfw include directory. We have to specify our glm include directory, and then our speed log include directory. That's all the includes we have for now. Next, we have to define the or the project defines, and right now we only specified one, which is our glw include none flag, which makes the include order of glad and glfw independent. Okay, now we have to specify the libraries to link with. So we only need to link with our Glad library when we specify that project later. 
Glad to and GLFW. That's all we got a link with for now. Okay, now we have some kind of specific stuff here. So we're gonna have a filter for Windows here. So anything below this point will only apply to Windows. And we're gonna actually put a defined in here. And we're gonna specify the WCharter UTF-8 support for speed log here. And this is only valid on Windows currently. So I figured it won't hurt to actually enable this. Next we have our our Mac OS filter. Because Mac OS actually requires us to link some of the Cocoa frameworks for it to actually build correctly. So we're going to specify that. And I will say that anytime you start a new filter, it basically invalidates everything before. So this is not Mac OS or Windows or anything, it's only Mac OS. Alright, so for our Mac OS, we need to link the core foundation dot framework. We need to link with the Coco framework. IO kit, we got a link with that. And then lastly, the core video framework. So this is stuff that only has to be applied to Mac OS. Okay, next we have our configuration. So we have to specify our debug configuration settings. In this case, we're gonna put it into the debug runtime. And we're gonna turn on the debug symbols. Symbols on. Then for our configuration, our release configuration, we're gonna put our turn, oof. We're gonna put our runtime to release. And then we're gonna turn on the optimize flag. Optimize on. And that's everything we need for our main project. But we still have to hook up GLAD2 and GLFW. So I'm gonna actually make a new group here. So this will just put all our projects that aren't actually our main thing, our dependencies, we can put them together. And this doesn't change the structure or anything, this is just a little grouping type of deal. So we're gonna start our GLAD2 project right down here. We specify location, and actually, I'm just gonna copy and paste this, and I'll adjust it as we go. So we have our GLAD2 project. Its location is in the vendor GLAD2 folder, and we're gonna link it as a static library, static lib. It is a C library, and we don't care about the C dialect in this case. We want static runtime on, system version latest, standard output directories. For our files, there's only one file we have to worry about. So we're gonna go into project location, into source, and it's just a single GLC file. Our include directory is a very similar story. In this case, I'll just grab the project location and grab its include directory like that. See, then we don't need to worry about defines, links, none of that matters. In this case, we just want to make sure we have our configuration set up correct. Then we have our JLFW project settings, and this one's going to be a, a little time consuming. So we have to link up JLFW, it is in the vendor JLFW folder, and we're going to link it as a static library. It is C library, we don't care about dialect, static runtime on, system version latest, standard output directory, and our files and include directories. This is gonna vary quite a bit. So in this case, I actually have these copied and I'll provide this pre-make file in the description at the end. But for JFW, every single major operating system, you have to specify these specific files. The include directories, GLFW doesn't actually care about that. The define is going to be 
platform specific. We don't care about what it links to or anything like that. So for now, I'm just going to leave our configuration set up over here. Okay, now I'm going to copy and paste the OS code. I'll just walk through that. So if we're on the Windows operating system, we have to include WGL card text files and all the Win32 specific files for it. And we have to define JLW Win32, just telling JLW to build for Windows. And then, oddly enough, this is only a Windows thing, but we have to put the CRT secure no warnings because Windows has its own specific functions it wants you to use, but JLW doesn't use them, so we have that flag. For the Linux OS here, we I decided to use X11, so we define that down here. Then we have to include the POSIX time thread, the X11 files, some Unicode, Linux joystick, Linux specific stuff here. Then for the Mac OS, we define Coco, since that's what we wanted to use. Again, we have the POSIX stuff we put in the Coco files. Similar deal. And I want to make a little note here that the reason I have this linked in the main project because instead of the actual GFW is because this gets built into a static library instead of a dynamic library, so it actually doesn't care about linking whatsoever. So I actually do have to find these up here. If you want, you could build GLFW as a DLL and put these links into there, but I don't really want to have to include a DLL. In this case, I don't think it's necessary. So let's give our premake file a save, and I'm going to run premake 5, and I'm going to generate a 2019 Visual Studio project. Okay, so I got a little bit of a typo somewhere. Let's see, at line 51, let's take a look at that. So at line 51, it should be defines with an S. Let's run it again. Alright. So it generates the new project file. So now if I open this up, in the Visual Studio load here, and I should be able just to click the Run button. It takes a second to generate some things. All right, and it runs. And to demonstrate the point a little further, I'm going to remove anything specific to Visual Studio and generate it as if nothing happened. So GFW, Visual Studio project file is gone. Glad2 project file, gone. So if I run it again, it would generate the files from scratch and this will work with make files, Xcode, whatever you happen to be running. So if I open it up, in this case it should build everything from scratch since it doesn't have any reference anymore. So it builds GLAD, GLFW, builds that just fine, and program runs. So that's the little build system I have here. And I'll leave a link to the, the premake website in the description along with this little file if you don't want to type it out. Since this, it can be a bit time consuming to get this little file working, especially for a simple project like this. But at least you'll have a little bit of a reference what to use in here. Anyways, in the next video, I plan to get a window up and running. Maybe a, maybe be able to change the background color of that window. And I think that'll be pretty fun. Anyways, see you all in the next video. Goodbye.